Could these actually have the best noise cancelling ever? Hey what's up YouTube, this is Aaron, welcome back to another video and today we're going to take a look at one of the most expensive mass consumer wireless earbuds, the Diviale Gemini. I myself am a big fan of Diviale speakers and honestly, it's about time they launched something we can all carry in our pockets. Fortunately, although Diviale sells speakers for several thousand dollars a piece, these earbuds aren't exactly the most expensive ones out there and still quite competitive in terms of price with other top earbuds. They cost $299. That's about $20 more expensive than the flagship Sony WF-1000XM4 earbuds. These are also rumored to have the best noise cancelling, so I am pretty excited to compare them to the Sony's. Of course, this is a full review, so we're also going to compare them in terms of fit and comfort, features, specs, sound quality, phone call quality, and the Bluetooth audio lag when gaming and watching videos. If you'd like me to compare the Gemini to other earbuds, let me know in the comments. Also, subscribe and ring the notifications bell so that you never miss another video from this channel. In terms of fit and comfort, I think the Sony's offer a much tighter fit because of the way these earbuds are shaped, the type of ear tips these use, these use foam ear tips, and because of the way the earbuds plug deeper into my ear canal. So if you're looking for something to work out with, the Sony's are going to stay better in your ears for sure. But some people might not like the Sony's fit. Instead, they may prefer the looser fit of the Gemini's. And since the Gemini's use silicone ear tips too, they require a little less effort to wear compared to the Sony's. For longer periods of listening, I feel that the Gemini's are quite a bit more comfortable and are less likely to produce any sort of discomfort compared to the Sony's. Now, let's talk about the Gemini's basic specs. These have an IPX4 water resistance rating and up to 6 hours of battery in the earbuds with an extra 18 hours of charge in the case. In total, 24 hours of playtime. Quite competitive with the Sony's, but of course, the Sony's have slightly more endurance in the earbuds themselves, with up to 8 hours of charge instead of 6. The Gemini's also supports wireless charging from a Qi compatible charging pad, and they support Bluetooth 5.0 and aptX codec transmission. Not bad, but unlike the Sony's, we aren't seeing anything here that indicates that the Gemini's support high-res audio streaming. However, they do have something called EAM, or Ear Active Matching. This is proprietary tech that automatically tunes the sound of the Gemini's to the shape of your ears for the best music quality from them. You don't have to think about it, just pop the Gemini's into your ears and it will do the rest. So there's this sense that DVLA is trying to make the Gemini's very easy to use and also make them sound great for as many people as possible, even with zero manual tuning. But if you do want to take things into your own hands and make the Gemini's sound the way you prefer, you can fine-tune them through the DVLA Gemini app. There's a graphic EQ and some EQ presets, and when I was playing around with the settings, these do make a huge difference to its sound quality. There's so much leeway as far as how I wanted to tune these earbuds to my preference. But for me, to be honest, these earbuds, even without manual tuning, they already sound pretty good. And I feel that they sound very close to the Sony's in terms of clarity, mid-range emphasis, fine texture, detail retrieval, and how its treble frequencies seem to shimmer. In short, if you like a more balanced, clean, and neat sound signature, the Gemini's will not disappoint. On top of that, Although it isn't the kind of sound signature that's targeted at bass heads, I feel that the Gemini's bass has a bit more punch and depth than the Sony's. Where the Sony's have the advantage is in terms of its track separation in the mids. In that particular area, the Sony's sound cleaner. Also, its sound staging sounds more open and wide than the Gemini. 
The Sony's also has high-res music streaming using LDAC audio codec and DSE Extreme, an audio upscaler that produces higher fidelity in your music by patching the data lost during Bluetooth transmission. But in most other areas, both the Gemini and the XM4 earbuds are quite comparable in terms of sound quality. The DVLA Gemini app also has some other toggles that lets you decide how much transparency you want, low or high, and there are three different levels of noise cancelling you can use depending on the situation. There's low, high, and plain settings. In a bit, you will be able to hear just how effective the Gemini's noise cancelling is, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say that I found the low setting works best for me in most situations. But if you're in an extremely noisy place, you can turn the high setting on, and what it does is it, it adds a layer of noise masking to the ANC. That does take the bite out of loud and constant mid-range and high-frequency noises, but the trade-off is that you can hear a small hiss in the background, which is why I don't really use that setting all that much compared to the low setting. The plain setting is a bit odd. It seems that there is no difference at all to low frequency cancellation, but it also lets in a bit of mid-range noise. Maybe so that you can hear the attendant speaking to you on a flight, but what about the crying babies? Besides that, there really isn't much else you can do with the app. I mean, you can change the earbuds touchpad to activate your voice assistant instead of skipping tracks and get software updates over the air using the app, but there's not much else you can customize. In that sense, the Sony Headphones Connect app is superior because the app allows you to customize the XM4s in many more ways. Overall, I found that the Gemini is far more skinny than the Sony's in terms of features and functions. For example, it doesn't even have the option for volume controls on the earbuds. If you want to know more about what features the Sony's have, check out my review over here. Right now, we're going to compare their phone call quality. As usual, I'm going to play some really loud cafe-style background noise to simulate making a phone call in a noisy cafe and record a voice memo on my phone. Background noise, David A. Gemini, record. I've now made a phone call in a noisy place using the Leviathan Gemini. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, but he landed on the dog instead. Now the dog's in the hospital. I have now made a phone call in a noisy place using the Sony wf 1000 xl 4 the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, but he landed on the dog instead. Now the dog's in the hospital. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, but he landed on the dog instead. Now the dog's in the hospital. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, but he landed on the dog instead. Now the dog's in the hospital. Now, I think the Gemini's sounded decent, but although the Sony's had a bit of noise leaking in, it had my voice sounding louder and sharper than on the Gemini. It also has a quieter background, which can make a lot of difference to call quality, especially in noisy places. The Gemini's do need a bit more work in terms of background noise cancelling and voice compression, but otherwise, it's still sounding pretty decent overall. For the noise cancelling test, I'm going to play the same background noise as before. Let's see which of these earbuds have better ANC.
Overall, I feel that the Geminis are quieter than the XM4s, but only by a little bit. They are comparable to the Sony's in terms of bass frequency cancellation, so you're not going to hear much of a difference when using them to cancel rumbling, droning noises like the sound of a subway train. But in terms of cancelling mid-range noises, the Geminis are better at that. This is largely due to a special noise cancelling algorithm from Debiale called IDC or Internal Delay Compensation. This extends the typical range of digital noise cancellation from the base frequencies into the mid-range. So the DBLEs are able to respond to a larger spectrum of noises. The Sony's can muffle more of the high frequencies, so it takes away more of that bite from sudden jarring noises like the sound of a power drill. But that is largely due to the fact that the Sony's use foam tips while the Gemini's use silicone ear tips. Right now, we're going to compare how much Bluetooth audio lag these earbuds have when playing video games and watching videos on both Apple and Android devices. The Apple device that I'm going to use is the iPhone SE 2020. For Android, I'm going to use the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. First, the gaming audio lag test. As a reference point, let's see what the internal latency looks like on the iPhone SE. This is audio straight from the iPhone speaker. Now, the Debiale Gemini, then the WF-1000XM4. Then we repeat the same test on the S21 Ultra. So the Gemini has just a little more lag than the XM4s on iOS, and it's almost no difference at all on Android. I would say that they are virtually identical in terms of latency because without slow motion, it's extremely hard to tell the difference. But please note that this only applies to playing video games or real-time content. If you're often watching videos on your phone using apps like YouTube or Netflix, you're not likely to get much or any lag at all because these apps have their own latency correction that automatically delays the video so that it syncs up better with the audio. You might get a little more lag on Android at first, but usually just 10 seconds into the video, the sound will get synced up like this. Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Aaron. Welcome back to another video. And today, we're going to talk about the improvements that the just announced iOS 15 will bring to the AirPods Pro and AirPods Max. There are five improvements that were announced at WWDC, like conversation boost, announce notifications, find my app integration. Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Aaron. Welcome back to another video. And today, we're going to talk about the improvements that the 
just announced iOS 15 will bring to the AirPods Pro and AirPods Max. There are five improvements that were announced at WWDC, like conversation boost, announce notifications, find my app integration. I think for its price, the Gemini is definitely one of the best in terms of performance, whether it be sound quality, phone call quality, or especially noise cancellation. It is, after all, from Devialle, so I wouldn't expect anything less, right? That being said, there are some ways these earbuds can be improved, such as in terms of features. Compared to the Sony's, it is simply not as feature-rich, and you can't really customize its touch controls, transparency, or even noise cancelling as much as you can do with the Sony's. No high-res music streaming support too, unlike the Sony's, so that is something that you want to consider if you listen to a lot of high-res audio. Another factor to consider is the size of its case. Many of the latest gen wireless earbuds have cases that have gone much smaller and more pocket sized compared to previous generations. The Sony's are a great example of that. It is now much more easy to slip the whole thing into my pocket compared to previous generations, whereas the Gemini's case is still pretty big. I mean, if I had a more compact alternative, this would not be my first choice to take with me unless I'm also carrying a bag. Furthermore, the Gemini's earbud standalone battery isn't gonna last long enough for me to consider leaving the case at home and just taking the earbuds with me. Nonetheless, at this price, this is definitely one of the best performing earbuds I have ever come across. Its ANC performance is phenomenal, better than the Sony's in some ways, so it's definitely worth checking out if you're going for something premium, the DBLA Gemini. Next up, there will be more comparison videos like this one, so if you don't want to miss out on those videos, hit subscribe right now and ring the notifications bell because this is the only way YouTube will notify you of new content from this channel. Thanks for watching and please slap that like button and share this video around. A big shout out to my lawless gang who supports this channel on Patreon. By supporting my work on Patreon for $1 or more per month, like these guys, not only can you help keep this show going, you gain some pretty cool rewards too, like having your name on that list at the end of every video. How cool is that? And at the highest tier level, you can even get free merch. So please join me on Patreon if you want to support my work, link is in my description box down below. I'm also on Discord, I've got a Discord server, so if you want to hang out with me, hang out with the Lawless Gang, join me on Discord. Again, links down below, more videos coming up soon, so don't go away.